So, uh, never mind the UFO that's off my left shoulder. So, um, this is a video about stylus rake angle. Now, what is stylus rake angle? Okay, well, that's when you have a cartridge mounted and you're concerned with the angle of the stylus as it hits the groove, looking at it sideways. Now, why are we concerned with this? Well, what you'd like to do is to have the contact edges of the stylus trace the record in the same way that the record was cut. The record is cut with a cutting stylus, the original lacquer, cut with a cutting stylus whose edges are extremely sharp. They are razor sharp. They have to be so in order to do a good job of cutting the groove. But there is a problem. Even though that cutting stylus is heated, it's typically ruby, uh, and it's cutting through a pretty soft material, a lacquer or a varnish, you are removing material from the surface of the record. And that creates what is sometimes called a thread of material that comes out. Now, this thread of material, you have to deal with it. You can't just let it lie around the record because as the lacquer comes around, and it goes to cut the next groove in, if it hits the uh, thread that's there, it can disrupt uh, the quality of the cut. So you always have to get rid of the um, thread, and you have to do so effectively. Uh, transcription records, interestingly, are cut not from the outside in, but from the inside out. And someone takes a brush, and they're constantly brushing the thread, towards the center over the cut grooves so that the cutting stylus never hits the thread or material that's been removed. However, non-transcription records, standard records, are cut from the outside in the way you play them, so you have to deal with that thread. So here's the problem. If you took a cutting stylus and you just plowed it through the material, um, very much like a plow in the earth, the material would just sort of come out. It wouldn't come out as a, uh, a uniform thread, if you will. It would come out in chunks. Very hard to deal with. But if you took the cutting stylus, and if the record material is moving this way, under the cutting stylus, and you tip that cutting stylus back two degrees, a magical thing happens. At about two degrees, it plows through the lacquer, almost like a plow into the earth, makes the earth come up much more easily. It's done on an angle. Of course, I'm exaggerating here. It's really two degrees, but that's all that's really necessary. And what comes out of the back of the cutting stylus is a thread, a continuous re-frozen or reformulated bit of the lacquer as a thread. And a venturi tube poised up here behind the cutting stylus um, is a vacuum system that pulls the thread into it. It goes through a bunch of tubes and winds up in a water bath under the cutting machine. So that's the reason that cutting styli are set at a two degree rake angle. And because as you get up into the higher frequencies, those groove modulations become pretty short. You want to make sure that the edges of your playback stylus are, have matched the exact ridges cut at the exact angle of the cutting stylus. And that's called the rake angle, and it's two degrees. So how do you set the rake angle? Well, with difficulty sometimes, you can raise or lower, of course, the back of the tone arm, and that has a great deal to do with how uh, the angle of the, of the stylus rests in the groove. You can shim the cartridge. Sometimes you cannot raise or lower the tone arm, you can put materials under the back side or even the front side of the cartridge in order to change the rake angle of the cartridge. And this is commonly done for tone arms that, that don't allow this. Um, how do you know when you've got it right? Good question. There are a lot of variables, and I can just touch on a few of them here, but I want folks to really appreciate that there are a lot of variables. So this is a difficult issue. So one issue is the, uh, is the angle of the cantilever and the way the diamond is mounted. 
there are a whole host of uh, angles that different cantilevers are made to operate fun uh, properly and they have diamonds mounted in them at different angles. So looking at the cantilever itself, looking at this angle with the diamond mounted on it and saying, well, this is supposed to be so many degrees, that's not very meaningful because, again, there are cantilever angles that are all the way from 15 degrees up past 25 and so on. And you don't know what the particular proper uh, tracking angle for the cantilever needs to be to get the stylus at that two degree rank angle. So how do you know? Well, best thing to do is assume that the manufacturer has done a pretty good job of mounting the cantilever and stylus and start with the cartridge mounted flat and the tone arm parallel to the record when viewed from the side. If you will view the candle, the tone arm rather, and get it parallel to the record as viewed from the side, sometimes a little bit challenging with a tapered cantilever, but I mean a tapered tone arm, but you can visualize it fairly well. That will get you close. How do you get closer? Well, a lot of people these days use a USB microscope and they take side views of the stylus. How effective is that? There are a lot of people that claim to know how to set up cartridges and tone arms and say, oh yes, this is the definitive way of doing that. Well, not really. It's okay. It may get you a lot better. It may tell you if you have a severe problem. So from that standpoint, it's very useful. However, uh, bear in mind that these pictures are taken with the cantilever and the stylus at a static position. That is, they're typically done on the surface of a CD or something smooth or a glass plate. And so you're looking at the angle of the stylus while the system is in uh, stasis. It's stationary, it's not moving. That's a problem. Nobody who does this or recommends doing it tends to mention that, gee, when the record starts moving, you've got frictional forces on the stylus. And what happens is that tends to push the stylus up and changes the rake angle. So taking a static picture with the USB microscope is okay, but you have to appreciate, depending on a lot of factors, the suspension characteristics of the, of the cantilever and, and so on, it's going to move when the record moves, and you can't look at it with USB microscope with the record moving. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, maybe somebody could, but it'd be a heck of a setup. You'd have to take a lot of photos and hope you get a good one. Um, the other thing is that looking at the shaft of the diamond itself and saying, well, that's zero degrees. And, okay, I'm looking at the shaft of the diamond. i draw a straight line through the shaft of the diamond. And that's where the tracing angles are on the diamond. Well, that's not a great way of doing it either. A lot of people do that. And they send photographs. Oh, look, this one's off by X number of degrees, four, five, six degrees. Well, again, it's not a good way of doing it. Some styli have unusual facets. We use two, two of the style that we use on our cartridges have very unusual facets cut into them. One of them, the diamond is actually right back at 20 degrees, and the two degree facet is cut just in the tip of the diamond. So looking at the shaft of the diamond is meaningless. The other thing is that when you grasp the diamond and you're fastening it in the machine, um, there is no telling that the diamond is perfectly shaped or that you've grabbed it perfectly and that you've ground it perfectly in accordance with the body of the diamond. So that's a problem. That can add one, two, or even three degrees to the actual facets at the bottom of the shaft of the diamond itself mounted to the cantilever. So looking at just the shaft of the diamond, it's okay, but between all the variables, the static photo of the USB microscope, the way the diamond is faceted, which can vary from one to the next. Looking at just the shaft of the diamond as it's mounted on the cantilever, you can still be off two, three, four degrees. So how do you do it? Well, that's a good question. Um, you start with the arm parallel, and you hope that's close. You can use a USB microscope. 
get some photos, kind of get an idea if you're in the ballpark. But the real way to do the SRA once you've got it, what you hope is plus or minus a couple of degrees, is by listening tests. And there are a lot of comments on the internet about particular records to use, what you're listening for, particular tracks on particular records, and so on. So I'm not going to go into the details of that. If you're really interested in it, research it, because a lot of people have, and you can take benefit of the, all the efforts they've made for how to adjust the rake angle and what to listen for. Suffice it to say that when the rake angle is pretty close, the high frequencies are going to be right. In a gross sense, if you've got uh, no rake angle or too little of a rake angle, the highs are going to sound very dull. And if you've got too steep of a rake angle, it's going to sound very bright and the high end's going to sound wrong somewhere close to the, the correct point, it's going to sound a lot better, but even tweaking it within then, there, within that range rather, to get it really close, there are folks that have a lot of really good comments about records they use, exactly what they're listening for, and what they think that is as it relates to proper stylus rake angle. So pretty challenging, and it varies from diamond to diamond, even within one diamond design and it varies from cartridge to cartridge quite a bit obviously so good luck is the advice i have for you it's a wonderful challenge if you're into analog and i can tell you that once you dial it in and once you get it right it's a wonderful thing and i'll also mention that getting the rake angle right can also make the diamond trace a little better in the groove wall and that can improve some of the cartridge characteristics so there are some things that are a bit measurable. Thank you so much for listening to this video about stylus rake angle, why it's needed, and how to try and get there. Peter Letterman and Soundsmith.